In a previous video, we rolled out our own authentication and we handled the session with solid start, no external dependencies for it. This time, we're going to add single sign-on using MediaKit Auth. Single sign-on or SSO is a method that allows a user to log into multiple services using a single set of credentials. So you can see that in a lot of websites with the social logins and the one button clicks to get you authenticated to, the, to a system. So today we're going to, to do that and we're going to use MediaKit Auth that's going to help us implement that and offers a bunch of providers. MediaKit Auth uses under the hood AuthJS, which some of you may have known as Next Auth. It's a very robust authentication library that has a bunch of providers for us to choose from. And in this case, we're going to use GitHub as our authentication provider, and we're going to add that to a solid start app. So as I mentioned before, we are going to use GitHub. So that's why I have this little button over here and I already have all the routes set up. So the public, we can get to it at any time and protected or user, we cannot go anywhere. So if we are in another route and we try to go to one of them, it gets us redirected to the login page because we are not logged in yet. And this app, as I mentioned before, is a solid start app. And to get started, we're going to go to our app, TSX, where we already have the app set up. We already have, we're going to use pretty much the same code as the default template, but we're we need to wrap our code into a session provider. This will allow any component within our component tree to access the session from the context. And this session provider is going to be imported by the solid media kit auth package. With that, our session is available whenever it's present. The other step will be then to create the options that we need for our auth. And this I decided to save at source lib auth options, but you can actually put anywhere you want. And the reason why this is outside of the API route, we are going to see in a minute. But what we do is we create this um, auth options object and it needs to satisfy the solid auth config. And it's going to grab the data from my GitHub provider from my .m file. If I am on development mode, I want a debug. So this is going to put a bunch of consoles to my log and you can disable if you want. And then we're going to grab the base path for the API auth that's going to also live in my .m file. With that, the setup is pretty much done and we can jump into the API and create this catch all route. So I'm going to go to routes, API, auth, and I'm going to grab everything that is there. And I'm going to import the auth options that we just created. And I'm going to import solid auth, the factory for my all my endpoints. And then I'm going to re-export those paths as get and post methods for all these URLs. So this means that the solid media kit auth package is going to be able to handle anything that auth, auth related with these two endpoints. It's just going to have a bunch of internal endpoints. It's going to handle whatever request comes in. With the wiring pretty much done, we can jump into my GitHub settings and I'll go to settings in my profile and get the developer settings and then the auth, auth apps. And then I'm going to set, get the GitHub client ID. If we generate a new client secret, it goes there. And then I can have an application logo for this. I put a diff, uh, proper name that's going to define with what I want. And as you can see, this one is in prod. If, if it was in development, these two, or especially, more especially the authorization callback, we need to point to localhost. So put localhost, in this case, mine is 3000, and that's going to make it point to that one. So as you can see, I have this local one, that's like a local app that I 
usually use. And then I, you can create a little logo over here and you point them to localhost wherever you want it to be and to the API auth route. And then you are going to need the client ID and then you're going to generate a new client secret. As, as you generate a new one, you're going to be able to copy once and only once. You cannot see that again. And otherwise you just need to delete it as you're not going to use it anymore. And other than that, you're good to go for dev. I recommend you having two apps, one for, app, for dev and one for production. Okay, so back to our code. Now, we are ready to start using things. Remember, you need to also add to your .env. What we need to do is these ones are going to be different from development and production. These one, this one is going to be the client ID for the OAuth in dev in this case, or different in production. And same as this other one, the auth secret, I added here a little code that you can run in your terminal a nice little hash that you can copy paste on your env and then you generate a new one for production. And this is going to help salting the passwords that you have. Now we are good to go and we're going to start creating this interface. So my index route is, is quite basic. So as you can see, I have only this login card that's this part um, the white box over there, the H1 and the navigation is actually outside and it's going to persist throughout all my views. So to the login card, I have a bunch of stuff that are coming from solid UI and I have a hard coded icon from SVG. And I'm using this helper from SolidKit, which is going to bring all the information regarding my auth. And so I'm going to use the card from solid UI. And in my button, all I need to do is use the auth.signin method. And I need to pass the name of the provider that I want to sign into. So it can be any of the providers that I have. And then the callback URL is where I want to redirect my user if their login is successful. So let's check it out. I just click on my login and then it prompts up for my image for that app that I created. I can authorize, redirects me back and straight into the user's page. And now I can navigate to all of them. I can navigate to this different one that's protected and back to the user as I want. Now let's check this user page. The user page that we can implement, for example, we are going to use we're going to create this protect server function. And the protect server function is going to then grab the get request event from SolidJS Web. So this is going to bring the whole request event. And from that event, we can then call the get session. That's going to come from Solid Media Kit auth. And then we pass the event and we pass the options that we just created in a different file. And then if there is a session, we return the session. If there is not a session, we ended up hitting a redirect and we cache this response under the session cache key. So whenever this page is about to load, I have in my preload function, the protect, which is then going to return this. And as a result, my component can grab it from the create async and then I'm going to again use the auth because if I have a session, I'm going to show the data relevant to the user. And I'm going to show the user avatar on the on GitHub. And if I need to log out, the API is pretty much the same from the sign in. I'm going to use auth.signout and I'm going to redirect them to the home page. So let's see how that works. Logged out, my session is gone. I cannot come back in. And that's it. But as you can see, this seems quite boilerplate here, right? And because of that, Solid Media Kit has something for you. There is a plugin for Vite called AuthVite, and it's the Auth plugin from Solid Media Kit. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to grab our Vite options and I'm going to add a plugin to that. So at this point, I'm going to say what's the name of the object variable and I'm going to put the path of the module where this module this is declared. And then I'm going to pass the redirect to, which is the route I'm going to send my user to if the protection decided to push them away. And with this, I can go to my protected route. Instead of writing all that logic, what I can do is just use as a higher order function and pass the protected with this dollar sign over here. And this is going to receive the session as a parameter. And as you can see, I cannot have any create async and stuff like that in this place. And I can just straight up use it and it's well typed in this case. So what this is going to do is during the VIT bundling and building process, it's going to basically expand this code and transform it to what we wrote by hand. But now we don't need to. And then as a second parameter of this protected route, I can pass something here as well. So I can decide on a component per component basis where I want to go. And so just to demo this again, I'm going to go to my login and instead of sending them to user, I'm going to send people to protected. And now I can log in and I go to protected. Both routes work in the same way. And if I log out from one, of course, I'm logged out from the other one and so on. And as you can see, I didn't got prompt by GitHub because my account already authorized. So I can just log in or log out. But my GitHub account has already authorized this app to have my data. And with this, we are good to go. And as your app grows, you can start adding as many providers as you want with just the simple clicks. And you just add a new button you make a new OAuth app in whatever provider you want and pass the right credentials. So I hope you have enjoyed it and realized that an external library to handle the authentication just lifts a lot of abstractions out of your shoulders and that allows your code base to be a little bit leaner. As long as you know what the library is doing under the hood, it can be a lifesaver. So let me know in the comments below what you thought about this one and if you have any feedback, comments or requests for a next video. Otherwise, I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.